Go for it. Today I will be presenting Gabriel Garcia Marquez and Ooh. Like His Life. Ooh. Jeez. So, just about, so I know Taj already kind of did somewhat of an history. I don't know, I went to the watch Anyways. <laughs> 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 anyways, so. <laughs> So in Colombia in uh, 1928, there was a banana strike massacre. 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 Just do Spanish. So, um, so the American United Fruit Company took um, economic control and exploited Colombian people. And so the, uh, the conservative government killed unarmed workers holding a demonstration. And then, um, like all of Colombia, there was like they denied this whole situation from their history books. And, okay, so his life. So um, uh, Gabriel was born in. Um, um, 1927 in Arata, Colombia, which is on the coast side. And he died last year, April 17, in Mexico City. What? Because uh, since he suffered from a lymphatic cancer. Why didn't you solve this yet? <laughs> okay, okay. Um, so he was a Colombian novelist, as you guys all know, um, a short story writer, screenwriter, and a journalist. And he was one of the um, like most known uh, writers of magic films. Yeah. So, his childhood. So, um, he was the oldest of 12 children and he lived with his maternal grandparents until he was eight, since um, his grandparents didn't agree with his parents' um, marriage for political and uh, military reasons. So, he was highly influenced by them since he spent um, most of his childhood with them. So, his grandma was a story uh, teller and she was superstitious and she gave him a, um, a lot of like knowledge on his background you know and she often talked about dead ancestors and ghosts and this made kind of like this affected him because it gave him like blurred lines between the living and the dead and his grandfather he was a he had a military career um, and he fought in at least two of the Colombian civil wars and during um, when Gabriel was with his grandfather, he would often tell stories about the battle and conflict that he had, which captured um, his imagination. And he was Gabriel's closest bond. So. But however, when he was eight years old, his grandfather died, and his grandmother was going blind, so he had to go back and live with his parents and siblings, which he barely knew. And so his education. So he was a um, he was a bright pupil. He won scholarships to complete his secondary education at um, a university or college, and he was sent to a college and studied law. But then his studies were broken because he wanted to become a journalist. So he began to uh, read Kafka. He actually read the Metamorphose, which we read recently in French, and. <laughs> and uh, he started publishing his first short stories in the leading liberal newspapers. So um, his literary career was sparked by the long period of political violence and repression known um, in Colombia as la violencia, so like the violence. So just like a little side note. So um, there was uh, during this time a period the liberal leader was assassinated and which initiated 20 uh, years of social like war kind of and a bunch of colonials were killed conservatives were what? <laughs> 150 i mean yeah, 150,000 colonials were killed and the conservatives terrorized liberal voters and murdered them so this affected um, garcia a lot since he was from the coast and the coast um, were the liberals and his religion, I didn't really find much information, but since Columbus is often really Catholic, I'm guessing he was raised in a Catholic, he was raised in a Catholic environment. Do you know what Jesuit is? Jesuit for Jewish. No, Jesuit, Jesuit is Catholic. Stop stopping. Sorry, I still get 
That's awesome. <laughs> during his um, he lived in a brothel, is that what you know? Yeah. yeah. So he was um, friends yeah. with and taken care of by prostitutes. Oh and he, like, as you can see in the book, he portrays them as like favorably. So like in the novel, I'm pretty sure there's like a, a brothel where he goes to. And so um, he lived and worked in many countries, such as France, Cuba, Mexico, England, and the United States, where he often did mostly journalism. Um, so his writing, <laughs> so um, he said that his stories came from an image and not an idea. And he published the Chronicle of the Death Foretold in 1981, and supposedly Castro helped him edit it, because it was fun as well. Um, so he won a Nobel Prize for Literature the year after, and he's known for his magical realism, and those are two of his most famous novels, 100 Years of Solitude and Love in the Time of Cholera. 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 I don't know. Is that a disease? Yeah, it is a disease. It is a disease, yeah. Alright. Which date? Chronicle of a Day foretold. Anyway. So, a Colombian military accused him of conspiring with Gorillas. And he was forced to seek. Um, Asylum. 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 He uses many of like events and characters from his real life and integrates them into his novel. So for example, Mercedes Barcha, his wife, was the narrator's young wife. And when he was younger, he proposed to her when she was 13. And then after, she declined. And he went to go travel and all. And then he came back and he reproposed. And she said yes. And that's kind of the same. So the narrator even says that he proposed to her as soon as she finished primary school in the book. Um, Luisa Santiago, his mother is named um, after, or he includes her in the story as the mother in, like, of um, the narrator in, in the book. And his brother, Luis Enrique, is also in the book, and he has a sister who's a nun, just like the narrator's sister. Mm -hmm. And <laughs> some awards. Can you go back? I guess say just yeah, some awards. It was a yeah. Nobel Prize. Um, Where is in a brothel? Which yes. is it? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. 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 I hate arrows so much. Yeah, what are you doing? I love David and Nelson so much. Hey, focus, people! Yeah, David. It's on tape. Anyways, um, so he had uh, close relationships with many like, big figures like uh, Castro, uh, François Mitterrand, which was the president of France. Okay. Um, and Felipe Gonzalez and Bill Clinton, which made his life an unusually rich and illuminating story. Um, and he was the first writer from a third from a third world country to attain such universal acclamation, and he obtained a lot of success, and which wasn't really easy from countries. <laughs> um, and so just some questions. So I know that was really nice. To what extent did Marquez's grandparents might have had an influence on his writing? And if <laughs> I'm really judging me. But you don't. Like on his story writing skills or just the actual story? Like his story writing skills and Gosh, I do good. Well like for the, as far as <laughs> skills go, I mean if both his grandmother and grandfather like really were into that storytelling thing that probably stimulated like, his love. 
for making and writing short stories. So I could see where that kind of came out of me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, yeah. His, he said that his grandma helped him with that, the, like, the idea of like culture and things like that. So it's probably those things that he used with his novels and his poetry novels. So we are kind of <laughs> um, I guess. But that's that's not word. <laughs> <laughs> no. Your discussions are very lackluster today, people. Yeah, that's your fault. Of course. I think that's a good thing. I think Madame walks out of tacos. Okay, so do you believe that his background had a strong influence on his writing? Itself? <laughs> <laughs> his background. I mean, the influence. His background influences. Think about his background. How does it affect the story? Didn't he like pretend that he was? Yes. Well, his well, well, this is his ability. Yeah, like when he went to the Bravo, like, yeah, like how he got raised by prosecutors and stuff, like he gave them like, a good raise. Like, 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 it's not just taking care of. Is that right? Yeah. Okay, yeah. is that right? So, like, that gives, that gives <laughs> you like, a, like a good image of those people, which I usually got in bad in our society. And like that, and how he describes that in the book also is like, well, it doesn't get the negative equity. Okay, well, I like how, like, you mentioned that Jesus was going to write stories based on an image and not an idea. So it probably means that every story he writes, it's related to an event that's happened in his life and that left a mark in him. So whenever he looks back, he sees that image or that whatever comes to him and he writes based on that image. So probably someone died in his family or someone, a friend, I guess, is the narrator. Same thing with us. So yeah, I feel like it changes how he writes about the story because he actually, as a narrator, he actually cares about things they wrote, whereas everyone else in the side doesn't seem to. So it's just a different perception. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> What were some of the jobs that he procured oh, while? Wow. Wow. <laughs> 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 no, because he said he had all of the jobs. Journalism. So how does that affect the telling of the story, guys? It was oh, 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 I, yo, yo, yo. Like, I don't know where, if I read this or heard it, like, if really this story was written from the story he heard, like, it's not in person. That yes, like, I don't like, think we he, mentioned this. Uh, yeah. Yeah. And about the story and that inspired him to write this. Yeah. It's actually based on a true story, but it's not that he Uh No, it was, it, was, it was in 1953 in a town nearby where um, the theaters near you. a yeah, like a, the bride is returned after she um, has been discovered as. attention from the get-go and he finishes his like uh, chapters with like dramatic punchlines and like reveals and stuff like that. Oh interesting, so, so like that journalistic style? Yeah. Okay, I like. Yeah, yeah, yeah what I was going to say is that like a detective or someone who's trying to figure out the story like. is very similar to a journalist <laughs> because he's trying to say the account of what happened and... Yeah. Sure, yeah. sounds good. Diego? And also like being a journalist allows him to ask the most pertinent um, questions possible that will allow him to get to the like the, bottom the, of this. the truth and yeah the bottom of the situation. Yes. So so yeah and so since the narrator is yeah, a journalist, he's uh, yeah. like he's in search of, like. of the truth, asking everybody about every detail. Sure. What assumptions can we make about journalists and Life. the stories Nosey. that they, they write? They, 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 find they, find they find all the information that they can. 
Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Alex? If they're like sort of influenced by someone else, like say a politician, they really have to accommodate that other view. So it can be very biased based okay. on who the is. There definitely is bias, you're right, Laura. Mm -hmm. But it has to be from a certain point of view sometimes. Because they pick all they the pick what? Sure. What, what would what uh, your trade is good? Good. Or what? They need to be able to, like, in a short text, just get to what the message is. Like, sure. Or, like, Being very succinct and to the point because. You know, when we read newspaper articles, it's not like a long roundabout way of people like reading headlines kind of grab your attention, yeah. right? Absolutely. Um, Taj? Uh, it definitely <laughs> embellishes certain parts of the story to like put emphasis on like murder or like the fact people uh, forgot, not, so not forgot, ignored it or like uh, how the. Did you just embellish, it. really? Yes. Yes. Okay. <laughs> yeah, cool. like, that's that's really embellish. True story. Like, like, the fact that, like, let's say, when we talk about politics, the like you'll see that some things are, oh, his mistake. Okay, okay, for sure. Um, I think perhaps in the past, journalists try to pride themselves on being objective, right? Well, we obviously see that that's, it's too difficult to be objective, right? Yeah. There's too much at play in regards to personal bias. And therefore, it's a kind of interesting irony that he goes into this situation trying to be objective. But we see that he cannot be, because he, you're right, he's personally invested in the story, even though he may not necessarily have lived it, but although in the story he seems to be a part, like he seems to be a character, a contributing character. Um, but that everybody has their own kind of personal account. He's taking those accounts down. Okay, uh, you're right, Diego, to try and get at this truth. Okay? Great. What type of narrative would you say this this So what yeah, so what what's the um, method of narration this means? Is it really cool? Because if you want to wear away the uh Santiago gets killed. You just how is he, but that's, that has nothing to do with the narration. How is the story being told? What point of view is being used? First person. First person. Wow. wow. Is it not first person, people? Oh, I agree. It's first oh, person. But he has access to everyone's knowledge. Yeah, and he only knows what they tell him. So it's from what they tell him. Okay, now that's a really interesting part. So it's a first person perspective. Okay, however. He's not a he is what he is. He is a character. Yeah, he is a character, but he's not present. Is it like he's real? His character is being the narrator. Like character. Yeah, he's the narrator. Is, is the narrator doesn't, doesn't have to participate. He's not in the the action. Action. Is he a physical person? Yes. Yes. He has a mother. Yes. He's a physical person. Yes. He's a he's a person. person. Yeah. Yeah. He was there the whole time, but then he comes back to what? Yeah. 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 Seven years in your knowledge. It would be your knowledge. Um, we go back in your knowledge. Yeah, that's our knowledge. They get back to the center. Uh, they don't. Not get back, but they exchange a bunch of letters and stuff. No, he brings back all of the letters that she had sent to him unopened.